Hi, my name is Peggy LaPointe, and this is Talking Trash, a Green Tips podcast, a chance for me to dive into the world of sustainability by talking to people in business and nonprofits and folks knee-deep in the field of sustainability. We kick off the series with Joel Schoening, Community Relations Director with Oregon Beverage Recycling Cooperative, otherwise known as OBRC. OBRC recently launched the first statewide refillable bottle program system in the United States. I first learned about this in, I think it was March, when Jules came to talk to the AOR Spring Forum. Uh-huh. And he started talking about this. It hadn't launched yet. Correct. Because uh, it launched in June, but uh, I had not heard anything about it up until that point. So it launched in June. And tell me a little bit about A, the program, and B, about that launch in June with Widmer Brothers. Sure. Um, so the program is really the introduction of a new bottle that we will be distributing to craft beverage makers, not just breweries, mm-hmm. um, that is intended to be reused. And we can get a little more of the details of that later. Um, but as part of the launch, we partnered with Widmer Brothers uh, the first day of summer um, and coordinated, collaborated. Uh, we have a couple former brewers on our staff, so they collaborated with Widmer's Innovation Brew Lab. Uh, all sustainable ingredients went into this really sustainable package for that for that launch party at Widmer, which was great. Yeah. Um, I haven't been down there recently. I don't know if they still have bottles of that uh, that beer. Right, because it pub. was a short run. It was. It was limited, and uh, we're talking to them about uh, another um, beer to put in that bottle, okay. and they are interested in using it again for their for their innovation innovation brews. I remember when uh, I remember when Jules uh, mentioned it, um, and he was talking about smaller craft breweries, and he even I believe, if I'm recalling it correctly, he even mentioned that Widmer might not be a good place to do it because I think you guys are still trying to figure out the the how that would work because uh, when I was a kid, I would go with my grandfather to with a, a wooden a uh, container that hold held like two dozen soda bottles, mm-hmm. and we take them uh, there and there. I I can't remember what it was. Bottle the bottle, yeah. you know, place, and we'd refill it with the sodas that we wanted, right. and off we'd go. And I think many of us have that memory. And so, this doesn't work. Well, it works similar, but there are different ways that this works. There's going to be yeah. So we're designing the program to. Um, really work in hand in glove with the current bottle return system as much as possible. So consumers will have to do very little differently at the baseline. Yeah. So you can go to the store, you can uh, select your 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 favorite beer in your refillable bottle, you can take it home, you can drink it, you can return it and get your deposit back in very similar ways with few exceptions to, to your regular bottle. I can yeah. talk about those later as well. Um, but we're also going to be rolling out this sort of crate program. So yeah. people who remember that and recall that, we're going to be calling it the bottle box. Oh, great. Um, it'll be made out of uh, its waxed cardboard. Mm-hmm. Um, they're very durable. Uh, we've, we've looked at uh, examples where these can be used for years and years and years. Uh, for a small deposit, you can take that home. You can put your refillables in it. You can bring it back, um, and we'll give you a, a 20% sort of bonus on your redemption value for sorting them out. And that works well for folks who have very particular uh, craft brews that they absolutely love in there. And and they are those are for the passionate folks who will go and get that beer. Yes. When these bottles uh, are slightly different from uh, the regular bottle deposit that we commonly think of, the 10-cent bottle deposit, uh, they're made here in northeast Portland at Owens, Owens, Owens Illinois. Owens, Illinois. Thank yeah. you. I almost did the, the other name. And they're a little thicker. Is that right? Correct. Yeah. So these are uh, specially designed for the reuse. Yeah. So they're a little bit more durable. They're a little bit heavier, uh, you'll notice. Um, and they're made to be used by multiple breweries. So oh, nice. um, way back when, when refillables were more common in the U.S., they were typically used, and this is still true in, in some other countries, a uh, specific bottle would be used by a regional brewery. Uh, so Henry Weinhardt's was, was the was the last one to do this here in the Northwest. Mm-hmm. So you could buy Weinhardt's in a refillable bottle, but that bottle was unique to Henry Weinhardt's. Okay. Uh, what we're doing is introducing a bottle that can be used by any craft brewery or beverage maker 
Um, and the benefit of that is we can get more bottles in circulation as it ramps up. Um, and that brings cost down and environmental savings up as you as you use that bottle. So it is a specific bottle. Yeah. Uh, it has a unique neck shape that's kind of recognizable. It's uh, it's kind of got a more angular shape than your regular long it's more neck. More of a triangle, right? Yeah, it's yeah. a little bit more of a triangle on top. Um, we've got this little down arrow bottle drop logo mark on it. It says bottle drop across the shoulder of the bottle. It's in debossed at the bottom. It says mm-hmm. please return. Um, and what's cool is that as the bottle wears uh, and rubs up against other bottles over time, over use, that debossing will pop out. Uh, yeah. So the bottle will show a little wear and it'll kind of patina a little bit. Kind of excited about this program. And when it, so stepping back for a little bit, there was a brewery in Oregon, uh, Double Mountain Brewery in Hood River, that had been uh, using their own refillable bottle system. They were one of the initial seven that joined. So let's call these guys out uh, Double Mountain, Widmer Brothers, Bowie Beer. Gigantic, correct. correct. Uh, good life, rock bottom, and wild ride. So yeah, we sort of refer to those folks as our sort of pioneering partners, but they're all sort of coming in in their own unique way over time. Uh, so uh, Widmer was the first in our bottle in uh, this last summer. Uh, Double Mountain has been a great partner. They did have their own unique bottle, but they're moving over to ours. Uh, they were the first in six packs, um, mm. so they were the first in, uh, and they're the. They were the first to, I think, hit grocery stores. And now oh. Bowie is coming in with a lot of uh, 500 mil. I think they have three or four options now in the 500 milliliter bottle. Um, Rock Bottom, you can get at uh, at Rock Bottom pubs. Um, and then, uh, yeah, Double Mountain still looking at it. Gigantic, we think, will come in later this year. Uh, we're also talking to uh, some cideries, which we'll be able to announce okay. soon, we think. Um Another Central Oregon brewery is coming in, uh, we think, soon. Can you say? Um, we've been talking to Worthy. Oh, great. Yeah, which is very exciting. And, and they're very uh, active in sustainability issues as well. Yeah. Are all of these breweries, I mean, I, I know Widmer Brothers are. They have a huge sustainability team yeah. uh, there. Are, are, right. are the other six, well, Double Mountain, obviously, if they were doing this on their own, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily. I couldn't necessarily speak for all of them, but I know Double Mountain, uh, in particular, has been very committed to this. Yeah. You know, they pioneered it even without this uh, broad system, and they've been a great partner for us uh, as well in terms of uh, working through some labeling stuff. Another way you'll be able to recognize a lot of these bottles is uh, through the packaging. So there'll be a little side uh, bar on the label um, mm-hmm. on many of the bottles, and also on the on the end of the six pack carrier. So some of these are available at like a local grocery store. Some of them not quite yet. You have to go to the brewery to get Yeah, them. like Wid- Widmer was only available through the brewery, but Bowie and Double Mountain are available. They're increasingly, um, you know, there's the, the complexities of the distribution system yes. as people move through their stock, but they're increasingly going to be the bottle that you will see a Bowie 500 mi- milliliter beer will be in the refillable bottle and <laughs> double mountain six packs. They were never in six packs before. Oh. Um, so that's new for them. And uh, 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 that was part of their commitment to this program. So double mountain six pack, if you see it, it's in a refillable. And how has the first six months been? The response um, from the brewers and, you know, us drinkers? Yeah, it's been very strong. Right. Um, you know, one of the things that um, we like to say is, uh, you know, glass, uh, you know, Glass has the best taste. Mm, um, yes. In addition to its environmental, you know, you, don't, you, you typically, if you're going to choose to drink a beer from a particular material, it's going to be glass. So people are excited about that. Um, the bottles are coming back. We've got a we've got a few pallets of them now at our at our headquarters that have come through the system, and um, they're not been washed yet. We're waiting until we have a, a big enough. Uh, sort of stock of them to 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 run through the wash the first time, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of excitement. We've we've been contacted by international uh, cola companies oh, and um, other uh, other beverage makers. So there's a there's a lot of potential. Uh, even like and when you said that, I started thinking of I don't want to say their name, but I will Hot Lips, mm. who um, also sustainable uh, company who makes their own uh, craft soda. Yeah. Um, they seem like a good fit for that, so. These are all folks that were. Exactly. Call us. Yeah. Um, the uh, cleaning facility, you you alluded to this a little bit. Um, you're waiting to get enough to make the drive. Right now, the closest cleaning and sterilizing facilities in Montana. 
Yes. But what I read is that there's hope by 2020, which doesn't yeah. seem so far away anymore. Getting very close now. Yeah, that there's hopes that um, we can get a bottle washing facility and sanitizer here. More than hopes, concrete plans. Um, yes. Yeah. So uh, for the first year or so, uh, we'll be sending them to Bayern Brewing, which deserves a lot of credit for this as well. Um, they've been doing their own washing program there, uh, which was pretty innovative. Um, and they have a great uh, program mm -hmm. Europeans they're very practiced the, the couple of the brewers there and the owner are Germans and they did this uh, in Germany and they're, they're very practiced at washing bottles so we'll be sending there for the first year to 18 months and then um, we think in 2010 2020 yeah, we'll have our own facility up and running are there any other um, cities or states that are picking this back up again I as I was doing the research I saw that uh, coca-cola was the last to, to discontinue that in the United States, but since that, and that was 15, 10, 15 years ago, yeah. I don't recall exactly. But are there any other rumblings and uh, other folks looking at what Oregon is now picking back up as a possibility? So a couple comments on that, really. I think um, this is the first program of its kind. Mm -hmm. So as I mentioned before, the refillables were all sort of brand specific yeah. prior. And now we're introducing this bottle that can sort of cross brands, beverage types, um, and we have heard some concerns in the in the U.S. beverage industry. Bottle shape is a part of branding. It's part of how you stand out on the shelf, which from the recycling perspective is a challenge because um, every new container can present new recycling challenges. Um, but we are hearing um, from a lot of uh, relatively large and sort of big players in the beverage industry um, Coke and Pepsi have both made pretty big pledges to reduce their impact. The the plastics, the microplastics and ocean plastics mm -hmm. and straws and all of those issues are are very newsworthy right now. And so people are looking at refillables um, oh. in new ways. So, so it tastes better in a bottle too. Yeah, it does. <laughs> so um, no commitments from any of those folks right now, but yeah. we've had conversations with, with Coca-Cola. That's with, great. Uh, AB and Bev with large people who are looking at it thinking what can they do differently right and and you know you brought up the whole uh, plastic pollution and single-use plastic issue and you know here in Oregon the recycling rate is pretty high but it had been low which is why we're now at correct. 10 cents correct uh, instead of the five cents people uh, you know ask me that a lot but around the country you know I'm from Wisconsin I go back home and they're just being thrown in the garbage. And uh, that's not uncommon anywhere else. So glass has a tendency not to get put in the garbage. People just sort of have that understanding. So that would be a fantastic way for a Coca-Cola or Pepsi bottling company to differentiate themselves and make themselves more environmentally friendly. Yeah, we're seeing some people definitely come uh talk to us as a way to, to look at refillables as a way to sort of market differentiation. Mm -hmm. um, so that's an issue that definitely sort of cuts wo both ways for for producers and distributors in the sense that they they see the, the potential to market it as an environmentally sustainable crop product. And, you know, that's one thing I haven't said directly yet is the refillable bottle is by far the most sustainable ch package yep. compared to plastic, compared to single use anything. Um, there's no question. It's Estimates vary, research varies depending on life cycle and, and a lot of various factors depending on where it's consumed. But it's clear that it's approximately 90% less carbon footprint life cycle on the refillable bottle compared That's to any huge. other container, which is huge. Yes, it's huge. And these bottles, I read, have the potential to be clean and sanitized 25 times. Correct. And then they get recycled and crushed into new glass. So yeah, the, the refillable bottle is already going to be made of 70% uh, recycled glass that we're collecting yeah. uh, in Oregon through through our recycling programs, a lot of that through the through the deposit program. Um, but those refillables will also, end of life, they'll be crushed and made into new glass. So there's there's very little, almost no end of, end of life waste. And then I read uh, something else about the possibility for other types that we mentioned soda, but wine. Having the refillable, is that kind of like on the horizon, wishful? Yeah, you know? when we're looking at how big this could be. Right. Um, and we're also looking at um, out of state. So, you know, we right now, because the deposit only applies in state, 
Um, and the backbone of this whole program is really the bottle deposit. That's mm-hmm. what makes it work, and that's what makes our program so unique, is we have a collection infrastructure in place to do refillables, which most yeah. other places don't have. Um, but with that in place, um, we've even talked to out-of-state brewers who have said, what if you sent us bottles and we did a production run for the Oregon market? Fantastic. Um, so there's there's opportunities for this to, to expand. Um, We've talked to uh, winemakers about putting their wine in our bottle um, mm-hmm. rather than um, you know washing wine bottles, but in the long run, um, yeah, we we're the sky's the limit. We think. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, before I let you go, let's talk um, about this again because I I want people to understand how easy this is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, because I think. Uh, again, going back to my memory and lots of other people's memories about, you know, you had to actually go someplace to recycle them, to get them refilled. With these, when you are going to take your cans and bottles back, it doesn't matter if they're just the regular 10-cent deposit, deposit ones um, or the refillable ones. They can all go to the same place because the way the bottles are made, they get separated anyway. So folks don't have to go any place special. Correct. Okay. Um, I think to your point, uh, I think as, uh, you know, in the 70s when the bottle bill was created, uh, the first few years redemption rates were were in the 90s. Uh, People were doing it. Um, If the nickel had kept up with inflation, it would be 30 cents today. (laughs) Um, But for a variety of reasons, um, you know, over time and with introduction of curbside recycling and things, some people, I think, disengaged with returning their own containers. Um, but plug for for bottle drop is we're really bringing a lot of convenience back to the bottle return and we're offering a lot of sort of benefits that the average consumer can get out of that program. Um, but beside all of that, you know, you, you take this refillable bottle home, it's very easy to return it. Um, you know, we're working with a lot of retailers who are gonna provide some incentives mm. um, to use that bottle box. Um, and if you you know, if you don't have that, you, you'll be able to bring it back, get your dime, participate in this system, and know that, um, you know, the, uh, an additional fact is, and in, in a lot of people don't think about it this way, but the container for your for your craft beverage is about 40% of the carbon footprint of that, mm-hmm. of that product. So if you can reduce that by 90%, um, it's, it's clearly the best environmental choice for for your beverages you're buying at the grocery store. So you can have a really good craft beer and still be environmentally friendly. And It's a win-win. And get your deposit back (laughs) real easy. Speaking to the deposit, though, as well, um, we uh, here at Kink just became, Alpha, actually all of Alpha just became a green certified business with the city of Portland. And one thing that I love that uh, OBRC has done is now with the collection, you can uh, designate even a nonprofit. Yes. So we're going to start in our kitchen having a separate container to collect ours, and it's going to uh, one of the employees. He's got a nonprofit set up to there. So it's fantastic. At, at yes. work, at home, you can help a nonprofit. I know a lot, a lot of it, a lot of folks do that for schools as well. So just another reason to collect that yes. ten cents. Um, and by the time this conversation airs, uh, Bottle Drop Give will have. Uh, surpassed its first million in donations from uh, from bottle returns to Oregon nonprofits, huge, um, and it's growing very quickly. So we're seeing more and more uh, companies, in particular, put it in their in their office kitchens and yep. people taking it home. Um, so yeah, listeners can check out Bottle Drop Give, uh, donate your your bottles and can returns to your your favorite charity. And where can they find out more information about this refillable program? bottledropcenters.com backslash refit. And you'll let us know when there are updates? Yes. Thanks, Joel. Thanks for having me. Thanks for joining me for my conversation with Joel Schoening, the Community Relations Director with OBRC. Be sure to like and subscribe to Talking Trash, a Green Tips podcast, wherever you're listening. Talking Trash is a podcast series featuring people in the Portland area and around Oregon who are having a positive impact in the world of sustainability. 